<sighs> What's up y'all? Back with another video. Now this video is gonna be a bit different from my normal content. Now I know you've already read the title, but let me give you some context. You see, for the past few weeks, I've actually been creating my own texture pack, and you've probably seen some glimpses of it in my previous videos. So today, I'm just going to show you all the basic things that you're going to need. In the description, you're going to find a link to the ultimate guide on everything that you need to know. But for this video, I'm just going to keep everything very basic and very simple. I mean, I'm just going to tell you all the things that you're probably going to change, and if there's one thing that I didn't cover, don't worry, that website probably has it. Now, I should give a warning before I actually get into the Now I should give you a warning beforehand. Do not under any circumstances steal somebody else's texture and call it your own. It's just not a cool thing to do. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't download somebody else's texture pack. That's completely fine. Just don't claim it as your own. All right, now without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Pause. Wait a second. Are you not subscribed? Did you know that about 90%? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. I'm not going to say that crap. You guys heard it a thousand times. I'm not going to say it again, but I would appreciate a like, sub, and comment. Um, it does make my day. And yeah, let's get back into the video. All right. So first, we're going to want to make our way to the dot Minecraft folder. On Windows, you're going to want to press the Windows R key and then type percent at that a percent. Then you're going to make your way to the dot minecraft folder scroll down until you see versions and then this is where we're going to get our basic textures for minecraft now which version of minecraft depends on which resource pack that you want to make for that version for instance for me i'm going to choose a 1.8.9 folder because i'm going to make a 1.8.9 resource pack so we're going to click into that version that you chose and we're going to find the executable jar file, this one. We're going to use this WinZip software or whatever archive manager that you choose. And we're going to use it to open up this executable jar file. And after that, we're going to look for this assets folder because this is one of the three important things that make up a texture pack folder. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to create a new folder and then you can title it whatever you want the texture pack to be called. For me, I'm just going to call it test pack yeah test pack and then you're going to drag your assets folder into that one next we're going to need two more files what the texture packs picture is going to be and the information of the texture pack when it comes to the picture that you choose for your texture pack it really doesn't matter what it is as long as it's square i'd recommend going for an 800 pixel by 800 pixel for me i'm just going to choose my youtube avatar which just so happens to be 800 by 800 pixels and then for the third file we're going to create a notepad now in the description of my video you should be able to see this text over here you can also find it in the website that i left in the description what you're going to need to do is copy that text and then paste it inside of this notepad now you're only going to be making one to two changes to this file the pack format line and the description line now the number that you put here for the pack format depends entirely on the version of the texture pack that you're creating for me i'm using a 1.8.9 texture pack so i am going to choose number one if you're using 1.16.3 texture pack for example you're going to have a six right here you should see on the screen right now all of the different versions and what number corresponds to that version for the description you're basically just going to delete everything inside of the two quotes and you can change it to whatever you want this will show up in the bottom of your texture pack and just show you who is it by or whatever you want the description to be for me i'm just going to say by me there it is after you're done with that you're going to save that folder and you're going to call it pack.mc meta and after you save that, you can just drag it into this folder and you're pretty much done with all the complicated stuff. So next you're going to click into the assets folder, go into the Minecraft folder, and you're going to find a bunch of the code and textures for all of the different items inside the game. Now I don't know why, but whenever you go through this process, it doesn't actually give you all the folders. On my left side here, I actually have another resource pack in which it has every folder that you're going to need. But don't worry though, because these missing folders don't actually do that much. This MC Pasher folder contains all of the textures for all the things regarding the sky and the moon and stuff like that. And this color map folder, well, I, I don't actually know what it does. It's, it's just kind of here. Now this folder does contain many things, but let's just go over the basics. Block states contains the many different states that a block could be in, like when a door is opened or closed. 
Unt is basically the font of all the words that show up in Minecraft. Language contains the data for what everything is called in the world. Models contains the size and shape data for all the different items and blocks. Shaders is, well, shaders. I'm not gonna get really in depth into this. If you really wanna learn about it, you can look it up yourself. For text, it contains all the different text that's going to show up in your credits, your end credits and splashes screen. And last but not least, you have the biggest folder of all the textures folder. This contains all the different texture files that you're going to need to make the world look way different than what normal vanilla Minecraft looks like. Now don't worry, me deleting those files is not going to break the game or anything. The way texture packs works is that if a certain file or texture is not detected in your texture pack, the game would simply just use the regular vanilla version of it. And also you should only include files in your texture pack that you have changed because it will bloat your texture pack and it will break pack stacking ability which sounds complicated but basically just don't do it. And also it might be illegal. The best way to avoid that is basically just leave all the files there for now and after you're done editing everything that you could possibly want to edit, delete every single file that you haven't touched at all. For simplicity's sake, I'm only going to be covering these three folders. Cause the other folders that I deleted contain stuff that you're probably not going to change. If anything you wanted to change in your texture pack isn't in the other three folders that I covered, like I said, the website is in the description. It should contain everything you seek. Let's get into the next folder, which is the language folder. For this, it's going to be a text file. And once you open it, it's going to contain all the different texts of everything that exists in the world. It contains a lot of code type lines, but don't worry, it's not that hard. Let me explain how it works. All of these lines tell the game that this certain part of the game should be called this and contain this phrase or word. For example, let's use this line right here. The beginning of this line says menu.singleplayer, which means that this certain line applies to the single player button in the menu screen. If you wanted to change to what that button says, all you have to do is change that word that comes after the whatever this symbol is called. <laughs> equal sign. Yeah, yeah, equal sign. For example, if I change only this word, keeping everything else still the same, it should change that button into whatever I want it to be called. Now, there is a lot of text in here. This scrolls down for a really long time, but let's just highlight a few things. First, you can change the options into whatever you want. For instance, if you want to change, I don't know, music and sounds into just sounds, you could change that to look like that. You can also change the different wording of the controls, like sneak. And instead of this saying sneak, it could be something like, I don't know, crouch or whatever. I think the most important stuff that you will probably change if you change anything in this file at all is the items. And it'll usually begin with the word item and then the item in front of it. And this will change what the items are called inside of the game. And this might be useful if you're like on, I don't know, a server or something and you don't have access to an anvil, but you really want one of your items to be called something else. You can use this to change the name of the actual in-game item. All right, so now that we edited the names, we can go to the models folder. In this folder, you'll find the data containing the models for the different blocks and items. Now this isn't actually going to change what the blocks look like, it's just going to change the size and how it is. So as a demonstration, we're going to go into the items folder and let's change one of the items models. <coughs> so let's change the model of the diamond pickaxe. Once you open that up, you're going to find all the data for this specific pickaxe. You probably don't want to mess with this top paragraph, so these are the two paragraphs that you want to change. This paragraph right here changes the way this diamond pickaxe looks in the third person and for this paragraph it's the first person now i'm sure you guys are in or have graduated from middle school so you know what a rotation and a translation is so if you just wanted to change the orientation of this pickaxe you can just change it to whatever rotation you want and it'll literally change the rotation of this pickaxe as you can see here i am now hitting with the side of my pickaxe instead of the front but since I only changed the first person, if I were to go into F5 mode, it'll look completely normal. And if I were to go back to F1, it'll change back into the way that it is. You can also change the scale of the item to however big you want it to be. For instance, if I want to change the scale of this pickaxe so it's two times bigger than what it is, then I would just change this 1.7 value to double that amount, so 3.4. And then if you were to go back in the game, you should be able to see the difference that you made. 
For me, again, I only changed the first person settings. So if I were to go into third person, it goes back into normal, which looks very, very trippy because you could tell like it looks normal here, but then it's humongous here. Oh my gosh, I love Minecraft. Also, just a quick important side note, make sure to save your work whenever you're editing any of these files. I think there was like one or two instances where I spent like, I don't know, 10 minutes working on one texture and then I accidentally deleted it because, you know, I'm an idiot. Don't make the same mistakes that I do. All right, now that we're done with these two, the moment that we've been waiting for is the textures. Now, even though the inside of this folder does seem very complicated, it's actually very simple, but it is very time consuming because you are creating your own textures. Now, the way Minecraft works is that they are all based on a certain PNG file in a certain resolution. Now the most common resolutions are 32x, 64x, and 128x. Now of course you can get even more HD than that and go up to 512 or even more. The bigger the resolution of that texture pack, the more HD it is, but it also takes a lot more time. Also just a quick tip for all the people out there who don't have the best of computers, if you want to make a certain texture, one solid color all around, I would recommend making the resolution very small because that does somewhat change your gaming performance. The difference between an all white 4x4 resolution block versus an all white 512x512 resolution block does make a difference. Even though they are the same color and they look the same, that 500x500 block still does have 500x500 pixels. So it does take a slightly bit more time to load. Also another quick tip, try and make all of your textures the same similar resolution. Also to edit all of these image files, I would recommend getting a photo editor. For all the people like me who are absolutely broke, don't worry, there are a lot of free photo editors out there on the internet. For me, I would recommend GIMP. It is very easy to use and learn and it will get the job done. Now let's talk about all the different folders that are in here. The first one is the blocks folder. The blocks folder contains all the different textures for all the blocks when they are placed on the floor. Let's use the diamond block as an example. If we open this file up and then we edit the texture, overwrite that texture, you'll see that if I give myself a diamond block, it will change into the texture that I made it into. You'll see that this folder contains the textures for all the different blocks in the game, but it'll also contain two more things the fire layers, and the destroy stages. You'll see that you can change the fire layers so you can make it whatever color you want and it changes separate fires and the fires on your body. And if you want, you can also make it so it doesn't cover up your screen. Keep in mind that when changing the fire layer, make sure to change both of them. I don't really know what happens if you don't change both of them, but just to be safe, just do it. Next is the destroy stage. There are 10 different files related to the destroy stage, numbers zero through nine. 0 being the very beginning of when you're destroying a block, and 9 being when the block is about to break. So, Alright, so I changed my destroy stage, so now when I try and break a block like this stone with my fist, you'll see it cycle through all the different destroy stages that exist. And for me, I changed it from going red to green. You can change it to however you want, just like in some texture packs, people made it so that it's a loading bar. You can really do whatever you want and be creative with it unlike me. Alright, the next folder is the color map. Now I'm probably not going to change these two files, partly because I have no idea what it does. You can look it up if you want, but I'm just going to delete it. Next up is um... Yeah, yeah, we, we, we don't talk about it. Alright, now we have the entity folder. This contains all of the different textures for all the different entities that exist. This includes like skeletons and spiders, but it can also include the stuff like the enchanting book from the enchanting table and also the end crystals from the end. Anything that is considered an entity most likely has that texture inside of this folder. It also contains the different banners that can exist, the beam that comes off of a beacon, the arrows that you shoot, the experience orbs that you get from killing stuff, and even stuff like the armor stand and the knot that is tied to a fence when you tie a lead to a mob. Kind of like this, where I changed a villager's face to... My face. I love this game. And then we have the environment folder. This contains the file textures for all the different stuff that has to do with the environment. Like the clouds, the phases of the moon, the end sky, and the sun. And of course, you know I had to do it. Amazing. I've looked at it for hours now. And then we have the font folder, which is probably another folder that you don't want to mess with so we're going to delete that as well now we have the gui folder 
and as you guessed, it contains the textures for all the different stuff in the GUI. For instance, the options background, that basically is what makes this background dirt. And you know, I had to customize it and make the background look just a bit more fancier. There's also the widgets PNG. The most important thing that you'll probably change in this file is the hotbar and the hotbar selector. For me, I decided to make it match with my colorway a little bit, so I made, gave it a light yellow theme, and I also made it so that it has tiny gaps in between the boxes. And there's also other stuff that is in here that I'm probably not going to cover. You can deal with that yourself, I think it's all self-explanatory. But the last thing I'm probably going to cover in this folder is the icons picture. There are quite a lot of things that you can change inside of this file, like you can change the experience bar down here. You can also change your hearts, so you can make it yellow if you want. But the most important thing that you'll probably want to change is your crosshair. You can make it whatever you want, even making it into a tiny dot if you really wanted to. One thing that I will say though is that you mark the middle of this crosshair just so you don't have like a lopsided crosshair or anything. You can really make your crosshair whatever you want it to be. For me, I have like a fancy, you know, ninja star thing going on. But you can also do stuff like... Don't judge me. And then we have the big boy. This contains the textures for every single item that is in the game. This is probably where you're going to spend most of your time editing your texture pack. I don't really need much time explaining how this works. It's basically the same thing as the blocks where you edit the texture of your choice, save or overwrite that texture, and then you'll see that texture show up in game. Some stuff that you might not be aware of, however, is that you can change the compass and clocks so that each position can have a different color if you want it to be. You can also change the different stages of pulling back the bow so that if you want to have like a green red light system you can do that and there's also this thing the ruby which i have no idea what it does but it looks cool and it's just kind of here vibing and of course don't forget if there are any files in here that you didn't touch make sure that you delete it the map folder basically has all the different textures for the maps the miscellaneous folder contains all the different textures for all the stuff like how an enchanted item looks and the way the pumpkin blur looks and yes this is what my pumpkin blur looks like don't judge me. The models folder contains the armor folder which contains the different model textures that you have when wearing the armor. For mine, I decided to go for a more simplistic look and I also added nipples just because. And also there is one thing that you probably didn't know about the vanilla Minecraft texture and it's that these models are actually quite similar to how a Minecraft skin is like where you can add a second layer to your skin kind of like what I did here and I added kind of flash wings to the side of my helmet to make it look cooler and also it added nipples. And you can get very creative with it. Like for me, I decided to make my chain helmet look different. And so it kind of looks like a bandana. And I also made the item texture look like a bandana and even called it a chain bandana. And also nipples. And then the second to last folder is the paintings folder. This contains the different textures for all the paintings. And then the final folder is the particles folder. This contains two textures, one for the footprints that you make and one for the particles. For the particles, it not only contains all the regular particles like the potion ones and the villager ones, but it also contains the fishing hook if you wanted to make it fancy. And then after that, that's pretty much it. That's basically everything that makes up a Minecraft texture pack. Of course, I didn't go in depth in everything. I just kind of gave you a basic rundown of everything that makes up a texture pack. If you really want to learn about every single little detail, you can probably go into the website that I left in the link in the description, or you can go watch somebody else's video who actually knows what they're talking about. And also one more quick side note, I did leave another website in the description called Nova Skin. This website is very helpful for the people who don't know whether if they can or cannot color in a certain area or not, because they give you a model that you can color on so you know which area you're coloring and which area belongs where. And it's also very helpful where you can find that invisible area that I talked about where I put that outside layer of the flash symbol on my helmet. And after you're done with all that, if you haven't done already, make sure to get your resource packs and drag it inside of your resource pack folder inside of your .minecraft folder. And then all you gotta do is go to options, go to resource packs, and apply your resource pack. And then there you go! That's pretty much everything you need to know about making a texture pack. I left a tiny display here so you guys can see what mine looks like. I gave myself clear glass and smooth colored glass up there. I, I still need to do the yellow. I kind of forgot about that one. But I also have wool right here, giving it a tiny like 
weird edge to it I don't, I don't know it looks cool and it's by side by side with each other and then my swords which you know it it's not anything special but I, I like I like how it looks this is my style right here I also have the different tool textures like the axe my shovel my pickaxe and my hoe the rod as well which I actually gave a tiny special gold texture to it and I also changed the stick as well. The potion textures, I also decided to make it look clear and more smooth. Just so it's easier for me to tell what potion it is. The enchantment, I also made it slightly orange because I like the way it looks. The bow now has a light indicator to see whether or not the bow is fully charged or not. I decided to turn the ender pearl into my face because why not. I also changed the valuable materials. Which the iron and gold ingot both look the exact same. Until you turn around and then look at these three. Now we have an emerald ingot, a lapis ingot, and a diamond ingot. Which I decided to change the name and the actual color of it. And of course you've been looking at it the entire time. My hotbar and my crosshair are all customized. Of course the mobs are all pretty much changed as well. We have the skeleton, the zombie, and the creeper. I even renamed them to aimbot, no life, and boom boom boy. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. Nipples. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like and sub if you enjoyed. And see ya.